Oh, welcome back. I'm Chris, Steam Specialist. And I'm Lauren, Cookie Master. <coughs> I mean Teen Librarian. And we're back to investigate cookies. In the last episode, we looked at a lot of cookie recipes. But the recipes have some differences in their ingredients. One of the things that changes is the various amounts of baking soda and baking powder in the recipes. This week, we're investigating the difference between white sugar and brown sugar. Lauren, why do you have those? Shh. We all love it. Cookies benefit from it. Sugar is pretty sweet. Last episode, we examined the difference between baking soda and baking powder, and found that you can use them in different combinations to create different textures in your cookies. But sugar is sugar, sweet is sweet, right? But that's not quite true, is it? Because as we discussed in our last episode, brown sugar has acid in it, which makes it react with baking soda. Need I remind you of the flesh eaters? Please don't. <laughs> and that's not the only difference. White sugar usually has larger crystals, which means it will beat more air into your butter. The classic Toll House recipe uses equal amounts of brown sugar and white sugar, so we'll use that as our control. We'll also try all white sugar and all brown sugar versions. We'll call these Test A and Test Flesh Eaters, respectively. <coughs> Lauren? What? More brown sugar means more acid, right? Fine, fine. Test B for brown sugar. Great. Let's bake. So, looking at the cookies, the all-white sugar cookies are much lighter in color. But they have nice golden brown edges. They're also flatter. Taste-wise, they're also flatter. Chris! <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> they aren't as caramelly, which seems to emphasize the butter a bit. The texture is odd. Firm, but not crisp. Odd. Yeah. And the all-brown sugar cookies look wrinkled and overcooked. Seem like they would snap in half. But actually, they don't. They're quite soft and crumbly. And they have a pronounced caramel or molasses flavor. And they actually taste a little saltier, too. In fact, they remind me of something. What was it? Oh, I know. Twix. Not the chocolatey part, but the caramel in the cookie. Oh, okay, okay. I could see that. Let's see what the librarians think. There's a little grit to it. This one's a lot more moist. There's almost like a crunch to the outer shell to it. Doesn't taste exactly like the original Toll House recipe. I like this one less than the first one. That might be my favorite. It tastes off. This is even softer. It has a good chewiness to it. The baby approves. Look how golden that one is. That one's kind of like yellow, isn't it? This one looks a little browner. Definitely crispier. Well, no, it's not. That just looks like a perfect chocolate chip cookie. That looks like the way they, they always look, they look if you make them right. This was a sweet episode. <laughs> Ooh. Wait, are you sure that's a good idea? Raw cookie dough is bad for you? Is it? Next time on Cookie Science.